One of the things I look forward to with getting the garden planted is that I can begin to share this garden with other things, namely butterflies. This particular plant that I have here is one that attracts butterflies. It's a budlia or butterfly bush. Now what I love about this plant is that this one is actually a low growing one. In fact, its name is Lo and Behold Purple Haze. You can see the gorgeous long blooms on it. Butterflies love it. You see this dwarf form of butterfly bush I like very much because it's horizontal and it spreads out so it'll fill this whole area. And the other thing about butterfly bushes is that they are perennial. These are shrubs that will stay in your garden for years to come. And they're constantly throwing off these really long, beautiful blooms. You can see once the bloom fades, it looks like this, but as new ones come on, they look like this. All very beautiful forms. I chose to plant these butterfly bushes here on this corner in a mass grouping so they'll create a lot of strong visual effect. You want to plant butterfly bushes in full sun. These will grow to about 36 inches tall and then they stop. That's why I like this dwarf form because you don't have to cut them back constantly. Lo and behold, purple haze budlia is not invasive. It doesn't set seed and come up everywhere in the garden. The other thing that's good about it is that it's deer resistant. So if you have problems with deer, you might think about some of these budlias. Just look at these gorgeous lilies. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of lilies to grow. These are oriental types, and there are a lot of beautiful ones that you're familiar with, no doubt, as we see them in beautiful florist bouquets all the time. And we grow a lot of them here, but what is so fantastic about this particular variety called Black Beauty is that it is the last one to bloom. Very, very late. It will bloom as late as August for us, and here we are almost at the end of July and look at all of the flowers still on these. It's slightly fragrant, but it's its statuesque quality. This tall, beautiful flowering lily that will come back year after year that's strong enough to support itself without any kind of artificial uh, structure or support makes it an ideal garden flower. So whether you are interested in growing them in a flower bed uh, among other things, or just alone, or if you want to grow them in a container, Black Beauty is an excellent lily to add to your collection in your garden. Another point that I think is worth mentioning is that the butterflies and other pollinators tend to be drawn to this plant, I think because of its fragrance and beauty. And of course, being one of the oriental lilies, so well known as cut flowers, don't think for a moment I don't miss out on the chance to cut some of these beautiful blooms with these um, recurving petals for use in the house. So it's a great all-purpose flower that will come back year after year in your garden. So give it a try. Boy, you're a beautiful thing. Yes, you are. I just want to share with you a hydrangea tip. Who doesn't love hydrangeas, right? Okay, this is Old Fashioned Annabelle. If you could have seen this blooming, well, about two months ago, you wouldn't believe the number of blooms. So many blooms, it's just weighted down and you can see them here. And they've already begun to turn that beautiful sort of chartreuse color. They've senesced or aged the flowers. And if you love hydrangeas, you probably are looking for ways to extend the season with them and there's no better way to do that than to dry them. And so this is the perfect time of year to go ahead and cut these, strip the leaves off of them like this, and then bundle them together and hang them in a dry place, all right? Then these are great for working into autumn arrangements as dried flowers or even use them in the holidays. I've worked them into garlands and even Christmas trees. So these are a great plant to have as a filler for autumn arrangements. Now, the thing to remember when you cut these back, what I've found if you'll get in here and take them back like I'm doing now, sometimes you will get a second bloom. And if you'll just look over here, you'll see a few flowers that have already emerged since I cut these back. 
So just a little tip on these Annabelle hydrangeas. Now there's a lot of confusion about when you should prune these in terms of them blooming. Now think about this. At the end of winter and beginning of spring, I'm talking about before they leaf out, I cut this plant down to about 30 inches tall and then it grows with great abandon. And then at the end of every one of those stems, we get these gorgeous white blooms. And by this time in late summer, they're ready for harvesting to be used for later in the fall. If you're not growing Annabelle hydrangea or one of her sisters that has a little stronger stem like Incredibol, you really ought to check it out. This is a great plant that I think performs best when it gets about half day sun. So keep that in mind. Make sure you add some to your garden. Boy, you are gorgeous. Look at all these blooms. How generous. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell for notifications.